Hi, this is Chris. And one of the things we'd like to do with our small Jayco trailer is to be able to pull over when we're traveling and heat up something in the microwave. If we had a bigger rig, the easiest solution would be just to get uh, two battleboard batteries and a uh, built-in inverter and we'd be all set. But with a small trailer, that's not really an option. These bundles aren't cheap, but the warranty is 10 years and Battleborn makes some really good, high quality stuff. On our Jayco, the battery box is behind the two gas tanks. Right now we have one Battleborn battery, which is 100 amp hours and it can provide 100 amps. But we would need two of them to be able to run an inverter large enough to do the microwave. And as you can see, there's really not room on our tongue to put a second battery. And also, the wires that go from the battery into the trailer are a very small gauge. You would need a four slash zero cable uh, to carry the current if you were gonna run the inverter and store the inverter inside. Here's the microwave that's currently installed in the trailer. It's 900 watts of cooking power and about 1200 watts of incoming power. When we were working on Sue's dad's e-bike battery, we found this company, Varunes, that makes 18650 cell battery kits. Here are two 12 volt battery packs that I made from the recycled e-bike batteries. This got me thinking, I wonder if we could use the Varenz V2 kit that has high amperage connectors to see if we could use make a very high amperage battery that only lasted 20 minutes or so. It turns out there's a lot of calculations that go into trying to design a system. There's a small cabinet over the sink and this could be a location to put the inverter and a small battery. Maroons has a new kit that they came out with which can handle higher amperage batteries. So these orange and black ones can handle 20 amps per cell. So you just put a cap on each end of the battery and then the different caps slide together so you can put them into larger configurations. They provide you the bus bar material and the nuts to be able to connect your batteries in different configurations. You need a battery management system so you don't overcharge or undercharge the battery and also to balance out the cells inside. It turns out the largest BMS I could find was for 100 amps so for this design we actually have to use two of them so I've split the system into two different sets of cells. One of the tricky things about these designs is making sure you can get the amperage out of the batteries. You need a certain thickness of wire. So in this case I've used 10 gauge wire and 4 wires off each battery gives me 80 amps worth of capability. 160 amps of combined power we need to actually use a 2 slash 0 cable to go from the battery pack to the inverter. My first test I'm going to use a Victron Phoenix 1200 a pure sine wave inverter for 1200 volt amps which is about a thousand watts. The great thing about this inverter is that its input voltage can go from 9.7 volts up to 17 volts so I don't have to do anything special with my batteries. Victron comes with an iPhone app that you can use to monitor what's going on. So here's the test setup. I've got three lights uh, with uh, 100 watt bulbs and one has a 75 watt bulb and I have a uh, heater and the combined wattage consumption is about 972 watts and that will be a good test on my 1000 watt inverter. So we're now running off the inverter. Interestingly enough is when you run off the inverter the wattage says it's higher. It's not overloading the inverter yet. After about 15 minutes, the uh, Victron converter 
got a low voltage warning, and then the BMSs on the batteries cut out and dropped the voltage down to pretty much zero. And now when I reset the BMSs, and if you look at the non-loaded voltage, it's 11.52. With the load, the voltage must have sagged to under 10 volts. We set up the thermal image camera to look at the different parts of the system while it was running. The highest temperature I recorded was 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is within spec for the cells being used at that drawdown current. So we're going to try to heat up some tea in the microwave from the trailer and see how it works. Unfortunately, it turned out that the wattage was too much for the inverter and the test was shut down. I really didn't want to spend a lot of money on a new expensive inverter, so the less expensive option seemed to be to buy a small 700 watt trucker's microwave. So here's the, the burrito test. We're going to cook it for a minute and a half side. It's drawing 960 watts. Ooh, nice and hot. Nice and steaming hot. Everything seemed to work fine. The battery pack didn't get too hot. I'm gonna declare this a success. So if you guys have ever done a project that feels like you've gone down a rabbit hole, this is definitely mine. So over here I have a trucker's microwave, which is 700 watts of cooking power and it's about 960 watts of input power. Over here I have a 1000 watt inverter from Victron and it's being driven by a lithium ion battery pack that I put together and it can provide uh, 30 amp hours of power at about 160 amps. So it's enough to run this microwave for about 15-20 minutes. So I still have a lot of work to do about packaging all this so things uh, don't bounce around. But it at least looks like I have enough space to store everything. So was this all worth it just to heat a burrito on the highway? Well, I don't know, I sure learned a lot. But I think Sue's gonna be glad to get her counter space back so she can put more plants around the house. Have a great day.